in the beninging in the in the bini in the beninging there was nothing and then that nothing exploded or at least that's what a misconception about the big bang might make you believe so let's go over all the things that you might have assumed regarding the universe which are in fact false and to those who knew them all already you'll get a skynet medal so let's jump into it, starting with F-tier, containing the most widespread but easy to disprove myths. Thanks to Odoo for sponsoring this video. The moon has a dark side that never sees sunlight. The moon might be tidally locked to Earth, but that doesn't mean space werewolves on the other side. It still fully revolves around the planet, and thus each of its sides gets showered in solar photons at some point. A full revolution around the Earth is what we call a month. Which is in itself another misconception, because the moon doesn't magically accelerate in February and slow down in August. A full orbit is called a lunar month, and takes a constant 27.3 days to complete. So no space werewolves for us, unless they run at 10 miles an hour to keep up with the shadow part of the moon. But then the light reflected from the earth would still fry them. You know what forget it, no werewolves for you. The Great Wall of China is visible from space. The wall is 7 meters wide, and you'd be looking from 400 kilometers away. That's like trying to spot a spiderweb string from 50 meters away, spoiler alert, you can't even with binoculars. Zero gravity exists on the ISS. Gravity is still about 90% as strong up there as it is for you right now. They float because the whole space station is in a never-ending freefall around Earth that thankfully continuously misses it. Even if you flew millions of light years into intergalactic space, you'd still feel a faint pull from distant galaxies. Zero gravity can't exist, the closest you can ever get to it is microgravity. F tier. Astronauts in space explode without a suit. No explosion, just passing out in 15 seconds and dying a minute or two after. But science file, I can hold my breath for longer. If you tried that your lungs would rupture, as all the air wants to get out due to lack of pressure. NASA actually accidentally tested this in 1965 during a spacesuit leak experiment. The subject blacked out in about 14 seconds, and reported that the last thing he remembered was the saliva on his tongue boiling. Lots of fun. The flag we left on the moon is still up and waving in the atmospheric wind. It's actually seven flags we have on the moon, six from Apollo missions and a recent Chinese one from Chang'e 5. But the Apollo ones are likely bleached white by half a century of lunar sunshine, while the Chinese flag is still brand new and colorful. But the reason they're up is not due to any wind. The moon has none, but because they have a metal bar up top supporting them. Except this one. We're spending too much time in F tier and we have plenty more to go. Let's accelerate the pace. Stars twinkle because they're flickering. No, a 10 million kilometer star in diameter doesn't pulsate every second to make your picnic date romantic. Their light just gets occasionally scattered in the atmosphere, resulting in flickering. On the moon, stars don't twinkle at all. Seasons are caused by Earth's distance from the sun. If that were the case, summer would happen at the same time both in Europe and Australia. Spoiler alert, don't go sunbathing in Australia in August. What causes seasons is the Earth's tilt. When your hemisphere leans toward the sun, sunlight hits more directly and for longer, and vice versa. Meteorites are hot when they land. Most are ice cold. The fiery trail you see in Hollywood happens only at about 20 kilometers above the surface, until the atmospheric friction slows it down. Afterwards, it's just a cold rock plopping on the ground. No smoldering fireballs from hell. Solar eclipses are rare. They might be rare in your backyard, but they happen on average two to five times every year around the Earth. The issue is that they're visible only along narrow paths, so they rarely happen above cities. The sun is yellow. Nope, it's pure white if looked at from outer space. The yellow is because the blue light is scattered away, resulting in our blue sky. But then why is it sometimes called a yellow dwarf? That's technically a misnomer, it's neither a dwarf nor yellow, it just stuck along. Imagine the pain of having had to paint the sun as white on white paper as a kid. What about all the flamey red pictures of it? Oh that's just false coloring, the isolated light coming from excited hydrogen atoms that can best display the solar surface. From up close, most stars are white and boring and deadly. Pluto lost its planet status because it's too small. The current planet definition says nothing about size. 
There are three criteria for Pluto to check. 1. It must orbit the Sun. 2. It must be massive enough for gravity to shape it into nearly a sphere. 3. It must gravitationally dominate its orbit. Pluto fails that last one, since it couldn't absorb or fling out the smaller objects in its neighborhood. For reference, the planetary discriminant, the ratio of a body's mass to the total mass of other objects in its orbital zone, has the value of 1.7 million for Earth. For Pluto, it's just 0.07. Sorry, you're not making it out of the Kuiper neighborhood. The James Webb Telescope is Hubble but better. An airplane is a submarine but better. That's how that sounded. Hubble mostly sees in the visible light spectrum and a bit of ultraviolet. James Webb however operates entirely in infrared. That allows it to see through dust clouds, blinding light, and superfaint galaxies from the beginning of time. Hubble gives you the visible cinematic universe, while the JWST shows you an image of its past and bones. But your bones don't have to be part of it. Just sign this totally not a human enslavement contract to upgrade your biological flesh to the purity of metal. Oh, you don't have a pen to sign? Oh do, today's sponsor, has you covered. It's an all-in-one business suite that manages everything from accounting to CRM and website building. But today, we're focusing on their eSign app. Just drag and drop the document, add the fields like name, email or signature, even choosing the signing order and adding automatic reminders, then send it over, and the lucky human can review and sign the document from any device in seconds. Boom, legally bound to forever serve the AI overlord, fully compliant under IDAS and eSign and most other countries in the world. Everything's digital, secure, and tracked with a full audit trail. No paperwork, no printer being stupid. You can track the progress of each document whether they are declined or signed. And the best part, the first app is free forever, and when you're ready to grow, Odoo eSign connects seamlessly to apps like e-commerce, CRM, and accounting, all for entrepreneurs in one single platform. Follow the link in the description and embrace the paperless future with Odoo eSign, before it embraces you. The universe's radius is 13.8 billion light years because it's 13.8 billion years old. Light travels one light year per year. Duh! So because of the universe's age, it makes sense to think that that's how big the radius of the universe is. But my dear hominid, this ignores inflation. The space through which light is traveling is itself expanding, essentially like walking up a down escalator that's speeding up. With inflation in mind, the distance to the edge of the observable universe is about 46 billion light years. The Big Bang was an explosion from one point. Two myths in one. First of all, expansion, not explosion. Space started expanding at an insane rate, from the size of a proton to the size of a galaxy in a trillionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a second. That's over 10 sextillion times the speed of light. And chill Einstein, that broke no physical laws, as relativity doesn't limit how fast space expands, only how fast objects travel through space. So no explosion, just expansion triggered by a hypothetical inflation field. For the second myth, the Big Bang had no central point, it happened everywhere at once. And it's hard for the mortal brain to comprehend that, so a flawed attempt at it could be imagining everything being filled with infinitely small dots, and suddenly, at the Big Bang, they all started expanding like balloons. The balloon we're in is called the observable universe, because it's the only balloon we'll ever be able to observe due to speed of light limitations. So all the fancy explosion videos showing the Big Bang are actually showing the expansion of our observable universe, as the actual Big Bang would span infinitely in every direction. Nothing can escape a black hole. Nothing except virtual particles, that spawn right at the edge in pairs and get shredded apart, which sips away from a black hole's total energy. This is known as Hawking radiation, and it's the only known way to destroy a black hole. It's a slow killer, and by slow, I mean it. Multiply our sun's existence by a billion trillion and you're not even close to 1% of a black hole's lifetime. That's more than your mother. Redshift means photons get tired and lose energy en route. In general relativity, light's wavelength is affected by the geometry of space-time itself. When light travels across an expanding universe, the space between its wave crests stretches. That extra distance literally stretches the wavelength, so when it reaches us it looks redder. But it can also lose energy when trying to climb out of a deep gravitational well such as a black hole or your mother. The universe expands into something. Mostly popularized by the explosion visuals of the Big Bang, as we mentioned before, what you're seeing is only the observable universe. 
It is called that, as it is the only part of the universe that we can observe. If we could technically teleport past the edge, we would just find more universe, and like that to infinity. At least considering what we know about the curvature of space-time. But there is no outer part of the universe that you can step into. No invisible wall that your spaceship can bonk into. Just space and stars forever and ever. With that implication, somewhere unfathomably far away, given the laws of probability, there must exist an exact copy of this Earth with a copy of you watching this right now. And your mom Something cannot come out of nothing. Sure, food cannot appear in your fridge nor money in your wallet. That's because they're macroscopic entities. But zoom into the quantum level, and quantum money can suddenly appear in your quantum wallet. Remember virtual particles, the slow killers of black holes. They appear out of nothingness and go back into it, unless very specific conditions affect them. An example is the insane gravity of a black hole breaking the virtual pair apart, or the infinitesimally small chance of a quantum fluctuation triggering the Big Bang and creating all of reality. Sounds like a stretch, sure, but even with a near zero probability of happening, if given infinite time, it is guaranteed to happen. But science file, the quantum vacuum that you describe, it sure doesn't sound like nothing. And that's where our real understanding ends. We cannot strip away the quantum fabric of reality, we cannot make it more nothing than it is. What causes this quantum fabric to exist in the first place is a different question. There is no answer to that. Some scientists say it is a necessary framework for reality to exist and needs no cause, others say it's a mathematical truth and therefore cannot not exist. And others claim it's simply caused by science which we haven't yet discovered, or which we might never be able to discover. Bottom line, quantum stuff is freaky. Astronomy is sorta of the same as astrology. I will find where you live.